Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the Young Muslim Readers channel. And alhamdulillah, we are back to our read a child story in this month of Ramadan. Bismillah. Today, inshallah, I will be reading from the book titled Good Night Stories from the Lives of Sohaba. Companion of the Cave Abu Bakr, who was to become the best friend and companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was born in Mecca. He was three years younger than the Prophet and both of them used to play together as children. As a child, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was very fond of his younger playmate. Soon, they became good friends and spent lots of time together. Over the years, their friendship grew stronger and stronger and Abu Bakr remained the Prophet's closest companion till the end of his life. Abu Bakr was known far and wide for his good character. He was honest and truthful as well as hardworking and fair in his dealings. He was extremely kind to all around him and always ready to help the poor and the sick. He was also very intelligent and his memory was legendary. His knowledge of family histories going back for generations was amazing. This was something which was highly valued by the Arabs. When the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, began to receive the revelations, Abu Bakr was the first person to believe in him after Khadija, anha, the Prophet's wife. He believed in the truth of the Prophet's message and without any hesitation converted to Islam, the religion of peace. Abu Bakr was a very straightforward man. He did not want to hide his beliefs. So, from the very beginning, he made no secret of his conversion to Islam and his loyalty to the Prophet. Rather, he persuaded many influential and wealthy people of Mecca, such as Uthman bin Affan, Abdurrahman bin Auf, Sa'ad, bin Abi Waqqas and others to do so as well. All these men were highly regarded by the townspeople and proved to be a great asset to Islam. When the Prophet وسلم, received his first revelation of the Quran, Abu Bakr was already a rich and well-known merchant. He was always ready to spend money for a good cause and once he became a Muslim, he would purchase and set free slaves who had accepted Islam and were being persecuted and tortured by their owners. When the Prophet وسلم, told the people about his miraj or the night journey, they ridiculed him, but Abu Bakr did not doubt the Prophet even for a moment, he said, I have never heard Muhammad tell a lie. I believe in everything he says. Thus, he earned the title of our Siddiq, or the truthful. By and by, when the persecution in Mecca became intolerable, the Muslims started migrating in batches, first to Abyssinia, and later on to Medina. The Prophet وسلم, encouraged this migration. When all the Muslims except the Prophet and his two close companions, Abu Bakr and Ali, had left for Medina, Abu Bakr asked the Prophet وسلم, to let him go to Medina as well. 
But the Prophet وسلم, replied, Don't be in such a hurry. Do you want to go alone? Wait, Allah might give you a traveling companion. Abu Bakr radiallahu an, understood that he must wait for the Prophet وسلم, and that the day of leaving Mecca was coming near. Secretly, he began to plan for the dangerous journey. He chose two of his best camels and started to feed them well so that they would be ready for the long trek in the desert. His daughter Asma helped him to pack the food and water they would need on the way. Meanwhile, the Quraysh were plotting to put an end to the Prophet's life. Allah, the All-Knowing, let the Prophet know of their wicked designs and instructed him to leave Mecca. On receiving the divine commandment, the Prophet وسلم, went immediately to Abu Bakr's house, though it was noon. The very time of the visit was very unusual, for the Prophet وسلم, never visited Abu Bakr's house at that hour. Abu Bakr immediately understood that something important must have happened. And indeed, the Prophet وسلم, told Abu Bakr in secret, Allah has commanded me to leave. So they made the final preparations for the journey. The night the leaders of the Quraysh were planning to attack and kill the Prophet, the Prophet وسلم, asked his young cousin, Ali, to lie down on his bed and wrap himself up in the cloak of the Prophet. Meanwhile, under the cover of darkness, the Prophet وسلم, quietly came out of his house and went to the house of Abu Bakr. Together, they left for Medina. Wisely, the Prophet وسلم, and Abu Bakr عنه, did not go straight north, directly to Medina. Instead, they took a longer roundabout route to confuse the possible pursuers. They knew that the Meccans would be searching for them, and to start with, they would send their people to check the direct route to Medina. So the Prophet وسلم, and Abu Bakr went south, following the route to Yemen, and stopped at a mountain a short distance from Mecca. There was a cave there called Thaw, and that was where they hid. The Prophet وسلم, and Abu Bakr stayed in the cave for three nights and three days. Every night, Abu Bakr's son, Abdullah, would come to meet them. He brought them news of what was happening in the city. He told them, The Quraysh of Mecca are very angry. They think the Prophet had hoodwinked them, so they are looking for the Prophet everywhere. They have sent such parties in all directions. They have even offered a reward of a hundred camels to the person who captures the Prophet. One day, the Prophet وسلم, and Abu Bakr heard some voices, then sounds of steps approaching the cave. It was the Quraysh search party looking for them. Abu Bakr was overcome with fear. He thought, we will be discovered any time now. But the Prophet وسلم, as if reading his thoughts, said, do not worry. Allah is with us. And then he asked, Do you really think anything would happen to two people who have Allah as their thought companion? Meanwhile, the men looked around and moved away. Nobody had bothered to look into the cave. When the sound of retreating steps and voices had died down, the Prophet وسلم, and Abu Bakr went to the opening of the cave. Offering thanks to Allah, 
The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr breathed a sigh of relief. But they remained in the cave yet for a while. When it was safe, they left the cave and with Allah's help reached Medina. Jazakumullahu khairan for listening. Today we have read from the story titled Good Night Stories from the Lives of Sahaba. Till next time, on a young Muslim reader, let's read a child's story. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.